My name is Sheree LaPlanche. I am Lady Sheree LaPlanche of Motivation Church, and I'm so glad to talk to you real quick. A little bit about praise and worship. When people say praise and worship to me, my whole being gets extremely excited. Like, I honestly want to lose my mind. If, if I could actually do a cartwheel, I'd do a cartwheel. I love praise and worship. And when you come visit Motivation Church, you're going to experience a little wild worship because this is what we do. We give God everything that we have, right? Because he is amazing, because he is the all-knowing one, because he is the all-omnipotent one, we give him all that we have. The Bible says that if we had 10,000 tongues, we still couldn't give him enough, right? The, also, the Bible says that we worship God for who he is. Praise is we worship God for what he's done. We love him for what he's doing. But worship says, God, I'm giving you everything that I have just because of who you are. It comes out of the depths of your soul and out of your being. And so there's an excitement that we have when it comes to worship because God, without him, we realize we can't do anything. We're like, God, I'm a mess without you. I'm a, I'm a wreck without you. And so everything is poured out in praise and worship. Man, listen, when it comes time to give God everything we have, and this is an opportunity we have, in this opportunity we have, you have no other choice. Lay it all out. At Motivation, you can lay it all out. I telling you, take the moment to lay it all out. We're connecting together, whether it's virtually, whether you're in some buildings, we are connecting with God to lay it all at his feet. He is our father. He is our friend. He's been our provider. He's our healer. And in spite of everything that's going on, God is still in control. And so because of that, we know that we can lean on him. And because of that, we give him all that we've got. So listen, I need you to make sure that in these moments of worship that you have, that you give it everything. Lose your mind, lose your breath, sweat your hair out, kick your shoes off. The Bible said David danced before the Lord and lost complete control and he was out of his clothes. So that was a wild worship. All right, so listen, I need you guys to make sure that in all things, remember praise is giving God just adoration and thanking him for what he's done, but worship comes up out of the soul. Listen, Motivation is going to be here doing praise and worship with you guys. You guys have got to stay tuned. NECTN, Motivation Church, we're together. We are about to do this thing. Y'all stay tuned. Wow. I, <laughs> yo, listen. It's been crazy. Faith Vibes has been on fire. We are in week six. Oh, can y'all believe we're here? We're in week six already. It seems like it's just happening so fast, but you know, they say time flies when you're having fun. God has been blessing us uh, this whole summer, and we've had some amazing preaching. We've heard some amazing preaching last week. We heard from Pastor Sean Sears, Grace Church. Shout out to Grace Church. And today I get another special guest because uh, I love you, Motivation. Y'all got to know I bring you the best of the best. I don't just bring regular people. I bring special people who are anointed by God to speak into your life. And today we have another great man of God, one of my best friends of the world, Pastor Kevin Eloy from the Kosh Church. Now, here's the thing about Pastor Kev. Not only is Pastor Kev cool, you'll know it when you see his hair, but he's also a Motivation Church fan favorite. That's right. Pastor Kev has been here. He preached for us last summer and the church is going crazy. I almost lost my job. They were like, we want a new pastor. We want a new pastor. We, you know, but I came back anyway. And and listen, Pastor Kev is just such an amazing preacher, communicator. He's a worship leader. Uh, he, he's so many things. He's a great husband. Susan, what up, yo? Uh, he's a great father. I mean, Kev, he's the total package. He's the real deal. And I am so honored that he's here with us today. Kev, I love you, bro. I appreciate you. Our talks, our conversation, seeing what God is doing in your life. And I'm just excited for what God is going to say. So listen, guys, lean in, show some love, and make some noise for Pastor Kev Eloy. Do your thing, bro. Motivation. How are we doing this morning? How are you guys doing? You guys doing good? I'm so excited to be with you guys. I Listen, I'm not just regular excited. Like, I am Red Bull excited to be with y'all. 
Um, I've, I've, been, I've been expecting of this moment. And so as you're joining us this morning, I just hope that you will engage with the message, engage in the comment section. Go ahead and tag somebody, like this video, like the message, like the sermon, share it. Because I believe that, that God's not only got a word for you, but God's got a word for the people in your circle, the people in your world. And I believe that if we can just jump into this, if we can engage with this message, not only does the message have the power to change where you're going, but it can encourage you and it could propel you into what God has for you next. So I encourage you to, to, to give somebody a virtual high five, go ahead and tag somebody, just be engaging because I believe that if you approach this with an expectant heart, I believe God's going to speak to you this morning. Um, I, I believe that if you feel like hearing it, like I feel like preaching it, I, I just, I know that God is going to do something for you and for your, for your family. Uh, I'm, I'm honored to be here. Um, it, it's, it's been a little time coming. I mean, we were here last year and, and we left like, you know, when you have just enough of something that you, you know, you got to go back for more. Like I felt like I just, I I got more than I needed and expected from motivation. And so I knew I had to make my way back and I hope the feeling is mutual. Um, If you don't know, I'm going to tell you, uh, I hope you know how blessed you are. You are ridiculously blessed to have to have pastor Jay and Sheree as your pastors. Uh, I know God is doing some amazing things here. Um, I I know preachers say stuff like this all the time, but it's like, like I, I, what I love about Pastor Jay and Sheree is like who they are up here is who they are down there. And for that, I honor the house. I'm excited about what God is doing in motivation. Um, and, and I know that that the best days are not behind motivation, church. They are yet ahead. Um, so as I dive in today, let me tell you, I, the title of my sermon uh, is, is not a phrase you like to hear so often. Listen, it's a phrase that, especially like when, uh, w- when I'm bringing in my, my car to get fixed or get a tune up or rotate the tires, whatever it is, like, I don't want to hear this phrase when I bring in my car. Or if, if I've got, if I need to do something to my computer, like, I don't, I don't want you to say this phrase to me. Um, as I bring my computer to you, let me tell you, I know for sure being in a labor room with my wife, I know for sure that all the moms watching, you do not want to hear this phrase. You don't want to hear the title of this message when you're about to start going into labor to deliver your child. Um, it, it, it's one of those things that I, I often wish, um, I could say to that person that had just gotten baptized, like, like they're still wet with the like water from the pool. They're drying themselves off. They're excited. They believe that they're everything awesome is a ahead, their best days ahead. And let me tell you, I often want to say this thing to that person because I know what comes with it. It's not one of those things that we love to hear, but I do believe it has to be said from the pulpits. I often want to say it to the church planner with all the new ideas and the dreams and the initiatives. Like I've been there. I want to say this phrase to those, like like I want to empower them and encourage them in their journey. But I also want to say this to them because I've been there and I know how, how painful certain steps can be. I want to affirm and encourage without discouraging and putting the fire out, but I want to let the addicts know in the, their attempt of changing their patterns and behaviors that, that, that this phrase is crucial to their moving on. The title of my sermon, I, I, I often want to say to those that are struggling in relationships and, and it's been painful relationships. You've been hurting and you're wondering, are you ever going to get out of this thing or are you ever going to recover? Is this relationship ever going to be reconciled? Some of you are like, will you get to the title of your sermon already? Well, the title of my sermon today is, This May Take a While. In fact, go ahead and type it in the comment section right now. Just go ahead and put the title in there and say, this may take a while. While you're writing it, tag one of your friends and say, listen, Pastor Kevin's sermons usually do take a while. So for the next three hours, we're going to talk about how this is going to take a while. Some of you just logged off because you thought that three hours were serious. No, come right back. Like, like I'm not going to preach for three hours, but for the next 35 to 40 minutes, I do believe that, that when we talk about this, even though it's not something we want to hear, I do believe it's where God wants to take us. And I do believe it's something you need to understand. In fact, I think, I think it should be Motivation Church's new motto, right? Like you should put it on your doors as new people are walking in. Like they open the door and say, welcome to Motivation Church. This may take a while. I think that, that as we dive into Faith Vibes 2.0, as we begin to talk about faith, 
I, I think it's easy to preach the faith. It's easy to talk about faith that happens all of a sudden. It's easy to talk about that moment that we're injected with hope. But the reality about faith is faith is like a seed. And seeds take time. In fact, if you have your Bibles, open with me to Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. Galatians chapter 6, the context is is people are getting weary. People are getting tired. They're wondering, is God going to actually do the things that he said he's going to do? This is Paul's response. He writes, let us not become weary in doing good. For at the right time, somebody say right time. In front of your screen, you say right time. For at the right time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. See, the reality about seeds is you've got to plant a seed. You've got to give the seed the things it needs to grow. But then you've got to give it time. And time becomes the multiplier so that we can experience the harvest. See, I I think most of us struggle with this idea of seed time harvest because we want to drop it in the ground one day and then we want to bring it back. We want to go back at five o'clock and and, and reap the thing that we sowed. But, But seeds and seasons require time. The reality is, is every season has a struggle that we don't know about. Every season has, has a struggle that you cannot see until you're in it. I remember not too long ago, actually, now that I think about it, it actually was over 10 years ago, my, 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 my father-in-law, I, I went to go visit my, my father-in-law and my mother-in-law, and they used to have all these acres, and there's so much grass, and, and, I, and I pull up to their farm, and I say, listen, your, your farm is so beautiful, I love all of the grass, it's so awesome, and my, and my father-in-law turns to me and says, you want to wake up tomorrow and help me mow it? See, it's easy to look at the beautiful grass, but it's hard. It, it, it's, it's, very, it's also easy to forget how, how other people have to work it so that it looks good. <laughs> Several years later, he, he came up, and, and they don't get as much snow in Kentucky as we do here in Massachusetts. And so, and so the snow is falling. They're hanging out with us. And he, he turns to me years later and says, wow, the snow is so beautiful. I turned to him, and I said, you want to wake up in the morning and help me plow it? <laughs> Every season has a struggle that we don't know until we're in it. And for so many of us, we look at other people and we look at what they have, but we don't realize what it took for them to get there. You can see the fruit, but you can't see the roots. Seeing the victory at the fruit level, we don't understand the fight that it took for them to get there. See, maybe you've been coming to church. Maybe you've been logging on for a while now and and you feel like you've received the promise. You, you've been injected with faith. And, and there's this promise. And, and, and between promise and payoff is this word we don't like to deal with. It's a word called process. Process is hard. Process is difficult. You feel like you've heard from God. You feel like you received a promise. You get excited about church. You received a word. God spoke directly to you. But between your promise and your payoff, there's a process we might endure. And, and oftentimes it feels like we're stuck in the process. It feels like it's hard to deal with the process. And the reality is, is most of us try to escape the process. But it's in the process that perseverance is produced. That was so nice, I'm going to say it twice. It's in the process that our perseverance is produced. We turn to God in the process and we say things like, God, get me out of here. We don't like the in-between. The in-between this and that. The in-between here and there. The in-between promise and payoff. The the in-between of where we should be and where we actually are. Or even worse, where we should be and where we were. What I need you to understand is that God never calls us to hear. See, some of us, we find ourselves comfortable in our here because we, we think it's in the here that God's going to speak. When God speaks to us and give us, gives us a command of action, God's always calling us to a there. And the reality about the journey as a believer, the journey of a Christian, is that as soon as we get there, there becomes here, and it's time to go to a new, new there. We're always called to movement. We're always called to the next. But the in-between, the process, it stinks. The time the seed is in the ground is the worst. However, it's, 
It's what defines us the most. It's what we do in the meantime. It's what we do when the seed is in the ground that will determine the duration of our appointed time. It's what we do when the seed is in the ground. How we respond to when our seed looks buried is how we will live out when our seed begins to grow. We try to escape it. We try to jump out. But when I read scripture, I see a God who loves to jump in the in-between. Maybe you... During this season, during the struggle, during the pain, you've been wondering, God, where are you? Where have you been? I, I've been fighting this thing. I, I don't know if anybody even knows what I'm dealing with. I don't know if anybody even knows my hurt, my pain, my struggle. Let me reassure you with this. Our God has only abandoned one thing. The only thing God has ever abandoned is the tomb and and because he's never abandoned anyone, let me tell you and reassure you, he is not going to start with you. See, God, God wants you to understand that you are not forgotten. It's in the in-between. It's in the process. The in-between, the calling and our comfort that we find hope. It's in between the test and testimony that we find our strength. It's in between the mess and the message that God brings hope. I came to tell somebody that you thought you were buried. You thought your life was over. Let me tell you, the seed of your faith, faith is like a seed and seed takes time. Let me tell you, you were not buried, you were planted. But know that you must remain planted for that seed to grow. Because seeds can only grow when they are planted. So here are some facts about our faith as it relates to seeds. Point number one today, if you're taking notes, and let me tell you, if you're not taking notes, let's start taking some notes. And let me tell you, I, I believe that, that when we understand these realities, it's going to give us hope to keep going. Point number one is fruitfulness is a result of faithfulness. What we, what we, what we need to realize is that is that the hope of where we are and the hope of where we are going is all of us have this longing, this yearning to be fruitful. People that are seeking fame, people that are seeking prosperity, people that are seeking wealth, inside, they're actually looking for fruitfulness. The reality is, is all of those things can be a byproduct of our fruitfulness, but the inner desire, the inner yearning of who we are is we were built to be fruitful. <clears throat> In the very beginning, God said, be fruitful and multiply. Fruitfulness is a result of our faithfulness. In John chapter 15, Jesus teaches us how fruitfulness and faithfulness are inseparable. He says in John 15, 1, he says, I am the true vine. In verse 4, he says, remain in me as I remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you and I are remaining in him. You will bear much fruit, but apart from him, apart from me, we cannot do anything. What I don't like about this passage is Jesus is essentially saying, listen, if you bear fruit, you're going to get cut. If you don't bear fruit, you're going to get cut. But there's a difference between being cut back and being cut off. See, those that are bearing fruit, God is going to prune some things. And sometimes life will come in and it seems like life will cut us down. But I came to encourage you to let you know that God is the one holding the scissors. He's the one knowing because he is the gardener and he knows where to cut so that you can grow and be more fruitful. Because some of us think that, that if, if we do the thing that we need to do when we need to do it, that's when we're going to receive the result. No, oftentimes it's just remaining faithful that God will do what you can't do. I have often said, oh, God's not looking for results. He's looking for faithfulness. And although I still believe that to be true, it's really just more encouraging when we, when we don't see the fruitfulness in the way we deem success. I think if this season has taught me anything is it's taught me, it's taught me to view success in light of who God is. 
Because some of our some of our measurables, they're weak, they're feeble. Many of what the world sees as failures, God calls heroes. But we are motivated by a desire to be fruitful. Scripture says the man who puts his trust in the Lord and delights in his law. Psalm 1 says that that person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yield fruit in season. What does that mean? That means that there are going to be some seasons where even though you are planted, it's not going to feel like you're producing much. And whose leaves do not wither, whatever they do prospers. See, in season, if you are planted in the right soil, there will always be something growing in your life. There will always be something maturing. There will always be something coming alive. But a lot of us, we want to be fruitful without being faithful. We want to be prosperous without being planted in the principles that produce prosperity. So nice, I'm going to say that twice. A lot of us want to be fruitful, but not be faithful. We want to be prosperous without being planted in the principles that produce prosperity. Some of you feel miserable. Some of you are tired. Some of you are growing weary, not because you've been doing good, not because you've been being faithful. It's because you haven't been planted. See, we want quick fixes. We don't like to deal in longevity. We have no follow through, no sustainability. In fact, I think it's deemed the millennial problem. There are some things that, that we have to deal with, but we want to deal with them like that. In fact, I don't remember the last time I didn't know something and, and had to read the manual of the thing that I didn't know. In fact, what I do is I go to YouTube and t t ask them to teach me how to do it. It's not what we want to hear, but let me tell you, there are some things that will only happen through time. We like the word suddenly. In fact, I could preach on the word suddenly, right? Bible is full, full of the word suddenly. The word immediately, right? Like the day of Pentecost and suddenly a sound like a thunderous and mighty sound entered the room, the earth, the tongues of fire. We love the word suddenly. But what we don't like is the word while. In fact, I don't like the word while at all because while is like this indefinite word, right? Like in Hebrews, the author of Hebrews is trying to encourage the, the people of God that are getting persecuted. And he's like, listen, hold off for just a little while because he's coming and he's coming soon. Really? Because they dead now. I don't know if I like God's concept of a while. You read in Peter, one day is like a thousand years and a thousand years like a day. I'm not sure I'm too confident in God's definition of a while. But sir, there are some things that will only take and happen with time. We love the word all of a sudden. I could preach on that. I could even get hateful Henry behind the screen right now. I could even get the keyboard warrior as he's there. I could even get him to say amen if I started to preach on all of a sudden. But what we must understand and what we must realize is that what we see as suddenly was somebody else's after a while. What God is doing in Motivation Church, uh, in fact, it's only your pastor that can assemble. Like I'm, I'm like the little sheep of all the goats that he got to preach during Faith Vibes 2.0. And, and, and some of us, we look at what, is, what God has done in such a short period of time. And, and maybe you, you've even been there saying, well, it'd be easy if I had what Pastor Jason had. Yeah, but maybe what, what seems like suddenly for you was his after a while. You don't know the pains, the struggles, the tears, the sweat. But what we do is, we're innately built often to compare. We compare where we are to where they are. And we think if I could only get there, but when you get there, there becomes here. And God is always calling us to a there. But comparison becomes the thief of joy. I want, I want you to understand that one of my purposes here today is to denounce the idea of magic Christianity. Jesus says, I am the vine. He didn't say I'm the vending machine. See, growing up, 
when, when I wanted to watch my favorite TV show, like when I wanted to watch Boy Meets World, I had to be in front of the TV on Friday night so that I could see the show. Some of you, I just lost you because I said Boy Meets World. Don't judge me. <laughs> but, but back in the day, if you wanted to watch a television show, you had to sit in front of the television show and watch the commercials. Like if you had advanced technology, maybe you had a, v a VCR that could record from the cable box. And as a result of that recording, you could skip commercials later on. Like, like I, I didn't live in that kind of world. Like I had to sit there and watch. And like some of you don't know the pain of like knowing whether or not it was a quick commercial break or a, a long one. Like you've been holding in your bathroom break for a long time. Like some of you don't know that that struggle because we live in a world of on demand. We live in a world of binging. When you want to watch it, you watch it now and you watch as much, much and as long as you want. I just said lutch, by the way, but you watch as much and as long as you want. In fact, I think in our world, wonder is gone. Think about the last time you, you thought about something that you once knew and you're like, I wonder what this is. What do you do? You immediately pick up your phone and you Google it. Wonder's gone. When we want to watch a show, we'll binge five episodes at a time, anytime. But, but I think the problem with this on-demand reality is some of us have brought that, that reality into the church. Listen, we don't serve an on-demand God. He's not a celestial sugar daddy. He's not a genie in the sky or a cosmic Coke machine. He is the creator and we are the created. He is the potter and we are the clay. He is the Lord and we are his servants. And so there are some things we need to understand that will only happen through the the process. Somebody say process. See, what we need to understand is that we are not the main characters of the Bible. God is. When we read the stories of David and Goliath, I can't tell you how many times I think I'm David. I'm not going to tell you I'm Goliath all the time, but you know who, I, who I'm more like? I'm more like the Israelites scared to even get in the fight. The story, the story is about a man who came to do for us what we could not do for ourselves. And so there are some things that will just take time. Want me to prove it to you? Like you said this year you were going to get healthy. But it took six months to get healthy enough to start working out. That's how bad you were. You've been building up that debt for years. You're not going to get out in four months. If you give it a while, you'll eventually experience all of a sudden. But what if I've been faithful and nothing is growing? Pastor, what if nothing is fruitful? It can be a very frustrating place to feel like you're doing everything right, but not seeing the payoff. It's very frustrating to be in the place where you were planted and not, nothing is producing through you. The dream that's not coming true. The things that are not turning out as you plan. The potential that won't come alive. The ideas that can't materialize. But what I need you to understand is that fruitfulness and faithfulness as it pertains to your faith looking like a seed are inseparable. Point number two, what you need to understand is that God has only called you, point number two, to be you, boo-boo. See, most of you have heard that said like, no, do you, boo-boo. No, you need to learn to be you. See, it's important to realize that it's not a sin to get weary. In fact, we all get tired. We all get exhausted. We all want to quit. It's not a sin to want to quit, but we miss out on what God has promised if we quit in the process. See, when you do this, you rob the energy of what God has planted. Some of you, in, in attempting to be who God has not created you to be, you're, you're trying to produce pomegranate fruit when you're in orange. It's time to be you. Be who God created you to be. Be the God. Be the one who, who, who he is working in you to produce what he put in you. Why? Because God never demands. God never picks what he didn't plant. See, some of us are too busy trying to produce something that God never planted in our lives. 
Are you trying to produce something that wasn't a part of your destiny? Did God plant that in the soil of your spirit? Was, was this encoded in the seal of your life, in the seed of your life? Some of us need to stop wasting our potential on areas that are not related to our purpose. I need to tell somebody this right now. You can't sing. So stop trying to join the worship team. But you better usher. You better join the children's ministry. You better still serve because it's being planted that you see the fruit. Stop trying to produce pomegranates when God created you to be an orange. You were created on purpose, with the purpose, and for a purpose. You were not accidentally made. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You're not a mistake, and you're not a sum of all your problems. God will not demand and never demand what he did not deposit. What God, what, what, what was plant, when, when what was planted is not producing, it is very frustrating. But the problem is not usually at the leaf level, it's at the root level. If you're not seeing fruits on the branches, if you're not seeing fruit on, on, the, on the ends, on the leaf end, some of us got to go to the roots and deal with those problems. See, God is expecting that what he planted will produce. God said, I've put gifts, abilities, concepts in you. God, said, God has said, I'm expecting production from the tools that I've given you. But you'll always be disappointed when you try to pick something that God didn't plant. While others of us, all we do is we complain and make excuses about the soil that we came from. Listen, there are people that came from worse soil than you, but they are planted in God and they are still producing fruit. So stop using and stop making the soil your excuse. The problem is the root system and you've got to get connected to the light that is Jesus. You've got to start drinking of his word. You've got to start drinking from the water that never runs dry from the well that will sustain us and from us will flow rivers of living water. You've got to let the light of the sun shine on you you and you've got to let yourself be buried enough. You got to let certain things die in the ground so that you can produce the, the fruit that God's called you to produce. Are you using your environment as an excuse to not as to why you're not growing? You are where you are on purpose and God knew what he put in the ground. He did it. Maybe the problem is not the soil but it's you. Are you using people? Are you using an offense? Are you using your workplace? Are you using the fact that you maybe have less education or the haters or you're less cultured or, or maybe you came from a bad parent? Let me tell you, you've got to stop using the first birth as an excuse to not produce fr fruit in your new birth because scripture tells me that the old things are gone. The new is made now. And so for us, we've got to let the past die. There are others that had it worse than you and they are producing. It's not the environment that determines how high you can grow. It's your willingness to let the environment feed you. You can let that pain produce something. See, we all need to quit the deflective attitude. I'll pass some a pray about it. No. Because you don't have to pray about obedience. If God's called you, to make a difference in this world. It's time that you start seizing the opportunities in the lifetime of the opportunity. See, but the reality is that some of you, you're just coasting through life and you're, you're, you're telling yourself, if I don't worry about it, if I just leave it alone, it'll go away. Nothing good grows when you leave it alone. See, you don't need to shut the whole damn thing down. We just need to fix what's broken. Don't forsake what's working. Deal with the things that aren't. Nothing good grows when you leave it alone. In fact, if you stop taking care of your lawn, you know what grows? Weeds. Some of us have to go back into our lawn and start picking out the weeds of the things that we let be. But there's no worse feeling in life than when it feels unfruitful. Notice how I said feels. You don't know what I mean? Think about the 28-year-old girl that's, that's, been, that's been waiting for that ring, that's been, been, been waiting for that moment, that's been waiting to start a family. And, 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 and after all those dates and all that makeup and all that cardio, there's still no fruit. 
Think about the, the man who devoted his life to starting a family and got the education and did all that he could do and is working in a field that has nothing to do with what he was doing, but he's working in a, in a job that could barely provide for the family. See, I'm not talking about the feeling of unfruitfulness when we haven't sown any seed because we don't have the right to be disappointed to not receive the fruit of a seed we never sowed. You can't be upset that you didn't get the knowledge from the book you never opened. You bought it on Amazon, but you never read it. You can't be upset that the church isn't going in a direction that you had hoped when you didn't put your anything into it. Yeah, but I gave that like one time, like that one time, I, like the book. Of Are you giving of your all talents, gifts, treasures? Are you giving of your time and your resources? In fact, Pastor Jay may not even use this message because he, he, he loves you enough to not offend you. But here's the thing. Here's the truth. I don't have to be invited back. I believe God wants you to know that you're frustrated because you're not seeing immediate fruit. And the reason why you're not seeing it is because you're not planted. Get planted in the house of God and let the things that were dead in the past die there and stay there. See, I want you to notice how I said feel. Sometimes the moments when you feel most unfruitful is when God is preparing you the most, tilling the ground and cultivating your character. See, we go to church, we get inspired, we do, and Pastor Jason comes up here, gives you a fire word, like, like my church has already decided, like, if anything ever happened to me, your pastor's getting called, and I don't know if I like that so much, but, but the truth about it is, is like, like, he'll come up here, and he'll preach, and he'll encourage you, he'll inspire you with hope, and, and you'll get, you'll leave here, you'll, you'll leave the stream, you're like, I'm gonna go do this thing, I'm gonna be different, my life is gonna be awesome, and by Tuesday, you quit. Pastor, I tried that thing. It didn't work. You've been living your life like this for 22 years and you think it's going to get fixed in two days? The problem is the pattern. You got to switch things up. You got to realize that fruitfulness cannot be separated from faithfulness. That God has called you to be you, so be you. Don't get weary. Don't get tired. Keep doing good for at the right time. You're trying to do 22 years of patterns in two days. This may take a while. You cheated on your wife four times and you expected her to, for, expect her to forgive you in four minutes. This may take a while. Your kids saw you live without God for 14 years and now you don't understand why they don't want to come to church and why you think, they think you're being a hypocrite. This may take a while. But if you give it a while, it'll be worth your while. If you give it enough time, eventually you'll experience the all of a sudden. See, you can't expect to do 40 years of soil. You can't expect to do 40, undo 40 years of brokenness in a 40 minute sermon. But I came to encourage you to tell you, I don't care how young you are. I don't care how old you are. If you are not dead, then God is not done. Romans 8, 28 says, For we know that all things work together for the good of those who love him and have been called according to his purpose. What I can't tell you is I don't know if he caused it, but what I do know is he's going to use it. That pain and the process, he's going to use to produce the, the, the prosperity that you've been leaning on. The reason you're not seeing it is because he ain't done. My faith is not in the plan. My faith is in the one who developed it. My faith is in God's purpose. But growth? Growth is uncomfortable. We don't like discomfort. But growth and comfort are rarely, if ever, in the same room. That was so good. I know some of y'all amen me right there. Go ahead. Give me the hand emoji. Give me the little praise emoji because that was good. See, what we need to realize is that growth and comfort are rarely, if ever, in the same room. My son, 18 and a half months, he, he's getting his fang teeth in, right? He's teething. And we, we experienced teething before, right? All the other ones came in, but none of them are as bad as this one. All his gums are swollen. We, we went back to like mushy food because he can't chew. 
It's uncomfortable. He's in pain. In fact, as a dad, I look at him and I'm like, I wish I could do more. It hurts me to see him like this. It's painful to watch. There's nothing I can do. But it's necessary. Because the momentary pain of now will produce what he needs for the rest of his life. Well, pastor, are you saying he's going to have these teeth for the rest of his life? No. Then there will be more shedding, but there will be more growing. And every season of growth comes with certain levels of pain. God uses our discomfort for our progress. I know it may look like your son is never going to change, but he ain't done. It doesn't look like you're ever going to overcome that drug addiction. And that drug addiction may take your life or their life, but he ain't done. It it, it looks like your kids won't love you the way you love them because it seems like you weren't there for them when they needed it. But let me tell you, he ain't done. 40 years old and you don't have a high school diploma, he ain't done. You, You missed your opportunity and didn't go to college. It's still, there's still time. He ain't done. He's never going to find love again. You were brokenhearted. It seems like everything was broken and you you decided to never go back to anything like that. Let me tell you, he ain't done. But this may take a while. Finally, point number three, as it pertains to our faith and our faith looking like a seed, point number one is that fruitfulness and faithfulness are inseparable. Point number two, you've got to learn to be you and to produce the fruit uh, from the seed that God's planted in you. But finally, point number three, I came to encourage you to tell you and let you know that you've got what it takes to keep going. So keep going. You've got what it takes because he put it in you. See, there's a common lie out there. That the, the world wants us to, to accept that as truth in our churches. That is not true. The, the lie is that God won't put more on you than you can handle. That is wrong because if you could handle it all on your own, you wouldn't need him. But God never plants anything in you that he doesn't want the fruit back from. And if you lean on him, he will be your source and be more than enough no matter what the world throws at you. Think about, I think about just life in general. I think about, I think about the Israelites in Jericho. You know the story, right? Like, like God tells them, hey, I want you to march around the wall. And when, at, at the end of the seventh day, on the seventh march, the wall is going to come down. I, I know I'm not God, but I, I know that if I were God, I wouldn't, de- I wouldn't have designed that miracle that way. Think about it on day one. Like all the husbands, all the warriors, they come back home from a day of marching. The wives are like, how many people from Jericho did you destroy? How many people did you kill? And he's like, see, see what had happened was is jo- Joshua, we just marched around the wall. Oh, don't worry. You're going to get them tomorrow, baby. Like you're, you're going you're gonna to fight all of them. The, the, the battle is joy. It's going to be awesome. It's going to happen. Day two, they go out and, and they come back and all they did was march. Day three, all they did was march. Day four, all they did was march. If it were me, I would design the Jericho miracle like a Tetris game, right? Like at every level, at every march, a chunk of the wall could just come down. Why? Because at every march, you know that you see progress along the way. See, the reason why most of us quit in the process is because we don't see the progress of seeing our payoff. But what you need to realize is that scripture tells us Hebrews 10 36, you need to persevere so that when you've done the will of God, then you will receive what is promised. See, sometimes you're not going to see progress in the process. You will only see the payoff at the end of the process. Try to say that three times fast. I I want you to realize that you may be on your last lap, but you'll never know if you stop now. Some of you are like, Pastor, I'm so tired of starting over. Then stop quitting. Keep going. You've got what it takes because the living God, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead as a believer is living inside of you. And if he could do that for Jesus, imagine what he can do for you in your life. Some of us quit too quickly. But it's time to keep going. Don't be so quick to quit. It's not about starting something. It's about seeing it through. But here's where I want to end today. For you to see the fruitfulness that is attached to your faithfulness. For you to be the authentic you that God's created you to be. And for you to realize that you've got what it takes to keep going. You must also realize that purpose requires separation. There are some things 
that used to produce certain fruit, but now as a child of, of the king, it can't produce that fruit anymore. I mean, I've got a son, so I'll give you an example. I, I think about my son, and he's got this little, this little like stuffy type bear towel looking thing. It's a little elephant. My wife has a thing about alliterating all the toys he has. So this particular toy is called Eddie the Elephant. Every time he goes for a nap, every time we go upstairs, every time it's bedtime, Bowman goes for Eddie. He loves Eddie. He rubs Eddie all over his face. He, sometimes he loves him so much that he, he bites chunks out of Eddie. That's really cute. In fact, if I had a video, I would show you the video. It's so cute. But it's cute in this season. Fast forward 20 more years. 25 more years. 30 more years. Bowman is on his wedding day. He's standing at the altar. Everything goes well. The reception is a hit. Everything is awesome. He's getting ready to, to, to be, to be the, God, the man that God's called him to be. And he goes into the bedroom and he brings Eddie with him. That ain't cute no more. There are some things that you've got to leave them where they were for you to progress into what God has for you. See, purpose requires separation. And for some of you, you've gotten, you've learned to be comfortable in the seed shell. But it's time to let that shell crack. Yes, it's been a little bit uncomfortable. In fact, being in the ground in the shell is a little cold. It's a little dark. It doesn't seem like anybody knows you're there. It feels like you're alone. But let me tell you, you can't fall in love with the shell. In fact, a caterpillar that falls in love with the cocoon is missing out on, a, on their purpose. You can't fall in love with the cocoon. You got to get out. Because on the other side, there's a change that lets you fly. See, some of you have fallen in love with the shell. You love hearing that you have potential. Ah, oh, so much potential in the seed. Well, everything God's put in you, there's so much potential. Yeah, potential's really cute when you're 10. Potential's awesome when you're 20. If somebody's still saying you have potential at 35, there's still hope. But if you reach your life at 90 years old and somebody said there was so much potential, you missed out on that potential. We've got to put action to our potential. I think about Abraham when he's called to leave his here for the there. God calls him to go to Canaan and so he leaves. He sets out on this journey. But scripture says in Genesis 11 and 12 that he settled in the land of Haran. He was in the land of Ur of the Chaldeans and he settled in Haran. Some of you, you've never left Ur. Ur is the world of comparison. They've got better. They are stronger. They are healthier. They are wealthier. And so you live your world comparing to what they are and they have and you don't. But you leave. You, you've left the land of Ur. You, you're comfortable being you, the you God's called you to be. Some of us are settled in the land of Haran. What does Haran mean? It's the dry stench place. See, when water becomes stagnant, then it gets full of bacteria. Maybe the reason why there are some things rotten, rotting on the inside of some of us is because we've become stagnant. We stopped moving. We stopped serving. You come to church to find out what's wrong rather than what you can pour in. You leave church saying things like, ah, I'm not getting fed there anymore. Maybe the reason is because you are so full and it's time to start feeding somebody else. Because when you make room to be fed, you will always get fed. Because the scripture says that his word never returns void. He's got a word for you. He is speaking to you. But what we need to understand is that you cannot accomplish your purpose with separation anxiety. Stop Stop leaving the comfort of where you were. It's time that you start serving in church and stop complaining about church. It's time for you to stop causing other people to get sick because you've been stagnant. Stop talking about it and start being about it. Separation is what's been influencing. See, God is not isolating you. He's preparing you. 
And separation is key. You cannot accomplish your purpose with separation anxiety. Maybe you're here. You're tuned in. And, and you're wondering, yeah, but, but I'm not worth very much. You're talking about all this potential and all these seeds. I don't think I've got anything. Let me settle with you that you are infinitely worthy. Not worthy to redeem something that you could never earn, but you are worthy. We determine something's worth by the value that we put on it. And you are intrinsically valuable because he loves you. In fact, he loves you so much that he sent his only son. Not, not while you were your best version. Romans chapter 5 verse 8 says that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So maybe you're thinking, I'm going to get some stuff together. I'm going to get my life right and then I'm going to come back to church. No. He died for you at your worst. The least you can do is give him your best. And if your best finds you at somebody's worst, you've got to leave the land of Ur. Because God's got you on a journey. And listen, what I want you to understand is that that value that he put on you was determined by what he was willing to pay for you. And he was willing to give his son. You know the verse, John 3, 16. He was willing to give his only begotten son. Whosoever believes in him I did a deep theological study on the word whosoever. And you know what I found? I found that it means whosoever. It means you. He loves you so much that he died for you. And so if he was willing to die for you, the least we can do is live for him. So if that's you today, and you realize that, that God... God is calling you back. Maybe, maybe somewhere in the message you realize that, that that seed has to start producing fruit. Well, Jesus says, apart from me, we won't produce anything. It's time to give him that seed back. If that's you, will you pray this prayer with me? Will you say, Lord Jesus, I believe you came, I believe you died, and I believe you rose again. Today, I surrender. Me for you. Today I'm whole. Today I'm free. Today I'm new. In Jesus name. Listen, if you prayed that prayer, I believe that you are a new creation. Scripture says that if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, salvation is yours. And upon that confession, listen, it's not the prayer that saves you. It's believing in your heart. So give God that seed back. Let that potential start to grow. Remain in him. Listen, that doesn't mean that we're not going to feel cut every once in a while. Because Jesus said, if you are not producing fruit, you're going to get cut off. That means you're going to be apart from the vine. But if you are producing fruit, there's still pruning that happens. And pruning is as painful as being cut off. But those that are cut off eventually die. Those that are pruned will produce more fruit. And he is the gardener. So maybe, maybe, maybe where God spoke to you today is the fact that you've been tired. You're wondering, does anybody know the struggle you are in? Does anybody care? Well, the verse Galatians 6, 9 was for you. Do not grow weary in doing good. For at the right time, in due season, for at the right moment, you will reap a harvest. You will receive what he's promised. If you endure the process, you will receive a harvest. If you do not give up, if you do not quit, if you faint not. So keep going. We love you. Thank you for tuning in. Share the message. Share what God is doing in your life. And I believe that Faith Faith Vibes 2.0 is not just a name on a wall. It's not just a screen graphic. It's not just a billboard or a poster. I believe that this is the upgrade you've been needing. So lean in and let that faith propel you. God bless you. Thank you so much. This guy, Pastor Cam, he's done it again. This may take a while. Listen, this is an amazing word. 
I'm so glad that we were able to be on the receiving end of what God is saying in this season. I hope that you were encouraged. I hope that you were blessed. Pastor Kev, thank you so much, man. It was such a prophetic word. You don't even know. But what, you know, we're going to talk about it over lunch. I think this one's on you. Anyway, church, if you were blessed, show some love. Make sure you stay tuned for everything going on motivation because there are so many things that God is trying to do. and We don't want you to miss a moment of it. Okay? So follow us on social media. Share it. Like it. All that good stuff. Watch the replay. God's doing some dope stuff. But do me a favor. Look at somebody and tell them. This week is going to be a great week in your life. Oh, come on. This ain't just going to be a great week. It's going to be the greatest week. I've seen if y'all's awake. This is going to be the greatest week of your entire life. There's going to be checks in the mail. There's going to be bills paid off. You're going to eat all you want and sip ISO tea and lose weight. Go ahead and tell somebody. Say, I pray that God covers you and blesses you and continues to do amazing things in your life. I'll see you again. Peace, everybody. Sheree LaPlanche. I am Lady Sheree LaPlanche of Motivation Church, and I'm so glad to talk to you real quick. A little bit about praise and worship. When people say praise and worship to me, my whole being gets extremely excited. Like, I honestly want to lose my mind. If I could actually do a cartwheel, I'd do a cartwheel. I love praise and worship. And when you come visit Motivation Church, you're going to experience a little wild worship because this is what we do. We give God everything that we have, right? Because he is amazing, because he is the all-knowing one, because he is the all-omnipotent one, we give him all that we have. The Bible says that if we had 10,000 tongues, we still couldn't give him enough, right? The, also, the Bible says, that we worship God for who he is. Praise is we worship God for what he's done. We love him for what he's doing. But worship says, God, I'm giving you everything that I have just because of who you are. It comes out of the depths of your soul and out of your being. And so there's an excitement that we have when it comes to worship because God, without him, we realize we can't do anything. We're like, God, I'm a mess without you. I'm a, I'm a wreck without you. And so everything is poured out in praise and worship. Man, listen, when it comes time to give God everything we have, and this is an opportunity we have, in this opportunity we have, you have no other choice. Lay it all out. At Motivation, you can lay it all out. I telling you, take the moment to lay it all out. We're connecting together, whether it's virtually, whether you're in some buildings, we are connecting with God to lay it all at his feet. He is our father. He is our friend. He's been our provider. He's our healer. And in spite of everything that's going on, God is still in control. And so because of that, we know that we can lean on him. And because of that, we give him all that we've got. So listen, I need you to make sure that in these moments of worship that you have, that you give it everything. Lose your mind, lose your breath, sweat your hair out, kick your shoes off. The Bible said David danced before the Lord and lost complete control and he was out of his clothes. So that was a wild worship. All right, so listen, I need you guys to make sure that in all things, remember praise is giving God just adoration and thanking him for what he's done, but worship comes up out of the soul. Listen, Motivation is going to be here doing praise and worship with you guys. You guys have got to stay tuned. NECTN, Motivation Church, we're together. We are about to do this thing. Y'all stay tuned.